Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutraj here, back with a new video lesson for you all. In today's lesson, we're going to take a look at one simple exercise to help further develop your walking baseline ideas. Now, this is a concept that can be used also to develop your soloing ideas. It's something I use a lot, mainly with soloing, but it works just as well with walking baselines. Now, I did do a lesson um, on two systems that I think are great foundations for um, walking baseline. So I'm going to put the link to that lesson in the description below. So if you haven't seen that, do check that out first before you get to this lesson. All right. So in this lesson, it's a very simple concept of using scales and arpeggios combined. You can either start with an arpeggio or a scale fragment and then get into an arpeggio next on the next chord. However, it's relevant for you. But for starters, I would like to assign an arpeggio for the first chord, scale tones for the second, so on and so forth. We're going to do this in the blues, F blues. Um, and to make it more interesting, what we're going to do is we're going to stay confined to this position. We're going to use the open strings all the way up to the fifth fret. So these notes are available, that's your range. And one of the reasons I like to do this is because it kind of forces new ideas out of you with combinations of how you combine arpeggios and scale tones and how you resolve your bass lines as well because you will start to realize that you don't always resolve on a root which is fun and which is something you actually need to create interest in your walking bass lines okay so F blues on the F7 I'm going to play an F7 arpeggio very simple once I get to this E flat I'm going to go down to the D and just go up the F melodic minor scale, which gives you the B flat sharp 11 kind of sound. Right? Once I play the G, I go up to the A on the F7. So, and then the arpeggio. Now for the arpeggio, I can do or let's do the first one okay that's the f7 a c f e flat and the next chord is the c minor 7 so i just go down to the c and go down the scale okay now i end up on the g the next chord is a b flat 7 I can either go down to the F or up to the A flat. I'm going to go down to the go up to the A flat. C minus seven, um, F seven, B flat. already and the next chord is an F7 so I'll go down to the E flat and play the F7 arpeggio and the next chord would be a D7 I can go up to the F sharp and play the D7 arpeggio but I'm going to do something a little different here since I have the D, which is the fifth of the G minor seven, and I want to start on that note, so what do I do? I just do a flat nine. So it's a dominant seven arpeggio still, but instead of the D, I play the E flat, which is the flat nine, which lets me resolve to the D. Okay? And then from the D, I can um, go up the scale. So I'm on the G now. And the next chord is the C7. So I can either go up to the A or stay on the G. Down to the A, which is a third of F7. 
Okay, so now you're starting to get confused with whatever I'm saying. Uh, take it slow. I'm going through this really quick because I don't want to drag this lesson because it's a very simple concept and I don't want to waste time talking about it when you can get the information and just get into the shed directly. Okay, so very simply put, the idea is to alternate between arpeggios and scale tones and you can resolve them however you want to but confining yourself to this first position and by also trying to combine different variations of the scale tones. If I say scale tones, you don't literally just keep going up. You can do however you want to, thirds, fifths, fourths, however you wish to. But the system is arpeggio scale or scale arpeggio. So if I do scale first and then arpeggio on the F7, So, I'm not even sure if I actually played scale and then arpeggio and kept alternating it because um, this is something I practiced a long time ago and I haven't really sat down to practice walking bass lines this way anymore. Now I try to just focus on being melodic with my bass lines and this system will help you enter that realm of playing melodic ideas. So if I were to play a blues completely freely, just the way I would want to play, I would, let me see. Right? I was trying to stress on certain ideas that I just spoke about earlier, but that's how I would do it. I'm just trying to create melodies relevant to the changes and I also try to keep an ear open for whoever is taking a solo or the melody or whatever is happening in the moment because essentially you want to be able to respond to it and keep the changes going. Okay, But I also want to stress on two important things regardless of what kind of system you practice or how you approach the note choices. The note choices is one thing, but the two most important things in walking bass line, the first one is your time. Play full quarter notes on electric bass, play complete notes. Don't cut it off, just let it breathe. playing whatever just to stress on the idea of quarter notes because what starts to happen is people try to imitate the upright bass and they start getting the ideology wrong which brings me to the second point which is sound so time means very clear quarter notes and with the sound again it's to do with clear quarter notes now in the process of emulating upright bass many guys start to do the palm mute thing even I do this a lot because we want more thump but then when you think about the upright bass, the thump is coming because the, who, whoever is playing on upright is trying to get a full note, a full sound constantly. So they dig in and they want the sound to sustain. That's the idea behind the walking bass line. It's to be full, not thumpy as such. But there's nothing wrong with... Right? But... I realized lately I don't feel like doing that because I don't like the sound of it that much anymore. So I just do.
sound, complete quarter notes. So time, sound, and then the note choices helps ease everything in. Because if your note choices are nice, but if your time and sound is not there, it's really pointless. All right, so I hope you get something out of this. Again, if you haven't checked out the previous lesson, do check it out. And um, until the next one, I'll see you guys in the shed. Peace.